New information revealed today raises another possibility for the cause of the Eaton fire. Never before seen video obtained by NBC4 shows the first moments of the fire burning below a specific electrical tower in the hills above Altadena. Our investigative reporter Eric Leonard joins us live right now with a story you'll see for the first time and only right here on 4. Eric. Well, this new video clip we're going to show you, it's very short, shows flames below the electrical towers where it's believed the Eaton fire started. It is similar to several other clips we've shared in recent weeks that have focused the investigation into the cause on those high voltage power lines that cross the foothills. What's new here is the perspective. This video shows the first flames were at the base of only one of the towers, which was supposed to be disconnected from power. Now, Southern California Edison has suggested it could very well be part of the explanation for how the Eaton fire ignited. A few seconds of video captured by a resident close to where the Eaton fire started on January 7th recorded flames below one of three electrical towers on a hillside. The metadata on the video clip shows it was recorded at 6.14 p.m. from the back of a home nearby. The person who recorded it does not want to be identified. What's significant is that the video clip shows the first flames were burning under the tower shown on the right. That's an old decommissioned Southern California Edison Tower, meaning its lines never carry live electricity. The path of that deadline, called the Mesa Silmar Circuit, is shown in green on this map, and the line ends right at the spot the Eaton fire started. In a new document filed by Southern California Edison with state regulators today, it says it's exploring the possibility that somehow that deadline was momentarily energized in the high winds on the night of the fire, writing, SCE is evaluating a number of potential causes, including whether the idle Mesa Silmar transmission line could have become energized and the extent to which that line or its grounding could be related to the cause of the fire. One would not expect an unenergized line to um, come to life. Electrical engineer Ken Buskey, who's investigated more than 1,000 fires, says it's possible for deadlines to become electrified through a phenomenon called induction, which can happen when energized lines nearby get close to the deadline, like in high wind conditions. The induced uh, currents and voltages in the deadline can uh, cause arcing through a uh, bad connection, and so you can have... Uh, arcing that causes a fire if the grounding isn't proper, even though the line's dead. He says it's unlikely the induction alone would cause a spark, but if the connection to that third tower wasn't grounded properly, heat and sparks would be possible. Because it is the end of the line and that's where it's grounded, uh, that's where the arcing and sparking takes place because there's a contact between the um, grounding and the uh, tower. Southern California Edison has said in court and in public that it has not found direct evidence that its live lines sparked the Eaton fire. But about two weeks ago, after some gas station security video emerged that showed sparks falling from the area of those towers, Edison said it was continuing to investigate the possibility some of its equipment played a role. The cause of the fire remains under investigation by L.A. County Fire Arson. I'm investigative reporter Eric Leonard, NBC4 News. So they acknowledge induction, and they call it a phenomenon. And he skips over it in this reading. He says the lines could have become energized, and right there in brackets it says EG through induction, and he skips over that part for some reason. A number of potential causes, including whether the idle Mesa Silmar transmission line could have become energized, and the extent to which that line... And then later on in the news broadcast they talk about how induction could have happened even though this is a dead power line could have happened when the other power line gets too close such as in high winds so they want you to imagine that the that the power lines are whipping around in the wind and the energized power line got too close over there to the dead one and that's how the induction happened and they also acknowledge this is the very last structure in in the sequence related to the cause of the fire one would not expect an unenergized line to um, 
come to life. Electrical engineer Ken Buskey, who's investigated more than 1,000 fires, says it's possible for dead lines to become electrified through a phenomenon called induction. Through a phenomenon called induction, which can happen when energized lines nearby get close to the deadline. Those are high tension power lines. They're not whipping around in the wind. They're not going to move two inches even in a hundred mile an hour wind. Which can happen when energized lines nearby get close to the deadline, like in high wind conditions. The induced uh, currents and voltages in the deadline can uh, cause arcing through a uh, bad connection. And so you can have a uh, arcing that causes a fire if the grounding isn't proper even though the line's dead he says it's unlikely the induction he says it's unlikely the induction alone would cause a spark but if the connection to that third tower wasn't grounded properly heat and sparks would be possible because it is the end of the line and that's where it's grounded uh, that's where the arcing and sparking it's because because it's the end of the line and that's where it's grounded, the energy, as I've spoken before about geomagnetic induction, isn't coming from the charged power line next to it. The electricity is coming up through the ground and people have asked me before about possible solutions. How do I keep my house from burning down in one of these fires? And I said, maybe disconnect your grounding wire which typically protects a house from lightning that comes from the sky and runs the electricity down into the ground. But if it's coming up through the ground, then that grounding wire might be where the electricity, the ground current, comes up into your house. So, they're dropping clues here. I think they uh, know a lot more than they're letting on, but they're having to acknowledge some part of the induction is the way that this fire started. So I've had this theory that a fire that you start with a lighter can actually create a plasma fire, acting like your finger touching the globe, drawing all those smaller filaments of electricity toward the antenna. In these plasma fires, that antenna, like the finger on the globe there, on the plasma globe, is the house or the car or something made out of conductive material, metals. And electricity is drawn towards other electricity magnetically because everywhere there's an electrical field, there's a magnetic field offset by 90 degrees. Anywhere there's a magnetic field, there's an electrical field offset by 90 degrees. And science has already pretty much agreed that flame, regular fire, is a weak plasma. So regular flame does have an electrical component to it. Thus, the fire on the surface where his fingers are touching the plasma globe has some electricity component to it which may draw the ground current electricity up from the ground. And I think I have video evidence of that actually happening that we'll look at here in a minute which means that you could start a fire with a match or a lighter in using conventional means and have it turn into a plasma fire that exhibits the burn patterns of electricity. And I think that's what we're seeing here on this channel. It's only got uh, 550 subscribers. I think most of his stuff is like homesteading and he shows how he creates a brush fire to burn some of the the brush on his property and it results in what appears to be a plasma fire. Okay, well, let's see. It's Christmas. Got that big, huge fire going. It's 30 feet long. And I'll tell you, I waited for a day where it wasn't getting, like it was, it was hard to get that thing to burn. To start, I had to start a fire to get a fire going, but look at this. I've got little embers smoking up here on the hill, about, oh, 40 feet downwind from it. But look at this shit. Yeah. Now, granted, that's a dead tree, but, <laughs> man, that is, uh, not what I intended to catch on fire, and the last thing I expected to catch on fire 
is that tree. It must have got an ember stuck in it. And it just caught. That thing see pretty much burnt down now. Let's see what else have I got burning around here. God, it's dropping stuff. Wow. I guess it started up there. Well, uh, you know what? It must have started right there in that. Is the inside of this tree is burning. I'm going to let it burn. I guess I ought to walk around a little bit more. See if anything else is on fire. I mean, the only thing this way, and it's why I did it today, because the wind is blowing this away. You know, the house is over there. It's nowhere near that. I lit the back of it. I don't guess anything else is on fire. You know, I saw stuff on fire here up early on. And I thought, I found, I saw a couple of pieces down there. I was like, oh, well, I just go stomp those out. But I think the tree was burning then. See if I can get not the sky behind that. All my years of firing, that's the first unintended thing I've ever caught on fire. Ever. And I've had some big fires, and this one was big. But man, the whole top of that thing's charred off. Okay, well, it's, no. it's Christmas. The only place he shows you that there's embers on the ground burning are directly below that tree like they fell because he shows you while he's filming the tree there's a bunch of different little pieces of branches, burning branches that fall while he's filming it. That's a sign of plasma fire and I'll, I'll show you why here in just a second. The other thing is he tells you and shows you it's burning on the inside. He says, huh, that must be where it started because it's burning on the inside and it's mostly burning up top. This didn't happen because an ember flew over. Notice that it's burning more right here. And then there's a unburned area right here on the outside. And then it's burning more up top. This unburned area between the two major burn areas, that's a plasma fire burn signature. Imagine a, a bolt of electricity going up through there and it surfaces right here and then it doesn't surface right here and then it surfaces again here this is like 99 percent positive plasma fire the fact that there's branches dropping shows an inconsistent burn pattern and i'll show you what i mean here in just a second when he films one on the ground right pan to the left a little bit more a little more pal Right here, you have a highly burned area with unburned on both sides. That's how these pieces of branches break away from the tree because it gets a, a, a part that's burning so intensely it drops the rest of the branch down. A regular fire that burns from the outside in doesn't do that. It burns the whole branch to the point where the only thing that's dropping are ashes. The weight of the branch doesn't become more than the, the burn spot can bear. That's the inconsistency of plasma fire. So when one of these spots that burns enough to where it burns through the branch... 
uh, burns one of these branches to the point where the remaining unburning part, the weight of the unburnt part of the branch, is too much for it to bear, then it falls from the tree. And the only place, the only place there's any of these burning embers on the ground is right below this tree. So those didn't blow over from his burn pile. Those fell down from the burning plasma fire tree. That tree didn't catch on fire because an ember, and he tells you, hey, it's burning on the inside, and how much the top part of it's burnt. See those branches falling? That shows the inconsistency of burn pattern. If it's a regular fire, it doesn't do that. But the bottom line here is, I think we're, we're seeing an instance, that's where he says it's burning on the inside. Let's hear it. Well, uh, you know what? It must have started right there in that. Because the inside of this tree is burning. I'm going to let it burn. So I think when he lit his brush pile over there, it worked like the finger on the outside of the plasma globe and drew some of that ground current up to it, and one of the filaments reached over and started a plasma fire in the tree 50 feet away. I don't know how this all works, but I'm 90% certain that what he has there is a plasma fire burning tree, and it's probably not unrelated to the brush fire that he had right next to it. So this might be an example of how you can start a regular fire with a match and draw up the electrical current from the ground, and you'll see the remainder of the burns show the electricity burn signature. So maybe a regular person actually can create a plasma fire, by starting it like a siphon that draws that electrical current up from the ground because flame is a weak plasma. Therefore, it's got an electrical component to it. Electricity is drawn towards other electricity. So the ground current is drawn up towards the flame current or the weak plasma from the flame. And then it proceeds to burn with the electrical burn patterns of a plasma fire. So maybe you can start a plasma fire with a lighter. And maybe that's why of all the fires that I've looked at since I started documenting these, only one or two could I not find the electricity burn signatures in. So even when it starts as a regular fire, it may be able to turn into a plasma fire. Just wanted to throw that in the library because that was a unique capture. And it's like the AI sent me this. I said, hey, psst, check this out. Look at this. I have no idea who this guy's channel is. I think most of his content is like uh, homesteading stuff. Anyway, I have no idea why I was able to come across this guy's channel. He's not about fires. He's not about anything that I'm into. But the AI was able to make the link and say, hey, come check this out. 